another episode of Plant-Based Dads. I'm Joey. If you're uh, looking for whole food, plant-based, vegan recipes that are fairly simple to make, then this is the channel you want to be part of. Um, I try and make food as simple as I can, but at the same time, whole food, plant-based, uh, no oils, uh, low fat. We follow the starch solution uh, by Dr. John McDougall. So if you like what you hear, hit that like button, show us some love, and think about subscribing and becoming part of the Plant-Based Dads family. Before we get started with today's meal prep video, and it's a good one, I want to say thank you to our patrons and our PayPal supporters. Our financial supporters are what enable us to get the plant-based message out to the public. They're part of our team, and without them, we couldn't do this. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon member or a uh, PayPal supporter, there's a uh, link below this video that you can click on and it'll take you to that. We could really use the help. One of the benefits of that is that you get this video 48 hours ahead. So usually uh, Sunday morning because they come out on Tuesday and uh, a lot of times Saturday night. So whenever I'm done editing it, I upload it. So you'll have early access and you can comment. And I respond to those comments all the time because there's only one or two comments until it really hits on Tuesday morning. And then there's so many, it's impossible to get to. So if that's something you're interested in, link below the video, you can get started. All right, today, a video that I absolutely hate to make, as you know, the meal prep videos. I swear, which is, I've already cut everything. I've already, like, all my little veggies are ready to go. I'm just gonna throw it all together, and it's all gonna be Instapot, too, or at least three of them. I might make Let's Cheese Sauce on camera. I don't know, I gotta make that uh, for his burritos. But uh, otherwise, I've got three Instapot recipes, and uh, I'm going to make this week my, the Instapot version of our 10 vegetable soup. Even though this is my soup recipe, I've only made the Instapot version once before. Uh, the Instapot version came along because Laura B. in our group uh, decided to take my soup recipe and make an Instapot recipe out of it. So, and it's really good. It tastes just as good. Uh, but I normally don't make it that way, but I'm going to do it today. So I will be following our recipe that we have posted on our website, www.plantbasedads.net. All these recipes are there. Uh, and uh, I'll be following along and you can follow along with me. I'm using the InSpot for this, and then after that, I've got every video that we do. I make these, my InstaPot refried beans, except I don't refry them anymore, I just leave them a hole. And that's what Lex eats all week long. He eats bean and cheese burritos, and that's the InstaPot beans, and a little bit of cashew cheese, and that's what he makes. So I have those all week because they're good on potatoes. They're just really good. They're really flavorful, and they just hit the spot. Beans, I mean, can't say enough about them. And then I'm going to make uh, my Spanish rice. And uh, again, in the Instapot, it's not an Instapot recipe, but I've made it in the Instapot before and it comes out just as good. So that's what we're doing. So go grab your mixing bowl, go grab your wooden spoon, grab your apron, and let's start cooking. All right, so first we're going to start with the Instapot soup. Tim, it's, uh, it's like 6 p.m. and I know it's meal prep, but it's actually Monday because we I, it was a three-day weekend, so I'm actually meal prepping tonight. Tim's going to be home in the middle of this, so at some point he'll come home, and uh, so let's just hope we don't hear the garage open. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to cook the barley first, and the reason is barley is kind of the grain in this soup, and it has a much higher cooking time, much longer cooking time in the Instant Pot than the rest of this stuff does. Uh, so we need to get that cooked so when we throw it in and we just cook it for a few minutes, it's already ready to go. So... That's what I'm starting with. What I've got here is one cup of barley. It's just uh, dry barley. I did uh, throw it uh, you know, in the colander and rinse it through. I don't put anything dry in without cleaning it first. So that's what I did. So I'm gonna throw this thing in the pot. I don't have an overhead camera. I don't have an overhead camera, but I do have a video on this uh, right here if you wanna check out me cooking it with the overhead camera so you can see it all going in. When you're cooking barley, uh, it's a two to one ratio. It's one part uh, barley and two parts water. So the one cup of barley is in there. We're gonna put in uh, two cups, I'm using filtered water, uh, into the Instant Pot here. All right, then I'm just gonna make sure it's all covered, and it is. And I'm just gonna put the cover on here. We're gonna set this to cook for 15 minutes high pressure. I already got my second insert ready to go, so the minute this is done, I can pop it out, let it cool, stick my, stick my next insert in and start cooking my next meal. Uh, so just wanted you to see that. I'm gonna keep that right here. All right, 15 minutes high pressure. Make sure I got my uh, venting here to uh, sealing position, my little valve, and ready to go. Now we just need to wait for this to finish. All right, so the venting's done and the little pin that's on top, it's dropped in. So it's time to take this off. All I'm gonna do here is get the uh, 
get the barley out and put it in this bowl right here so I can continue on with the recipe. And it's nice and cooked. Ooh, that steam is hot, so I don't want to burn myself. All right, normally you would rinse out this, uh, this insert right here so you can use it again. But I've got a second insert right here and I'm ready to go. All right, now we can start the, the main part of this, the sauteing the veggies. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of broth. I've got six cups of broth there. I'm just gonna put the smallest amount here, just what I need to saute. And I'm gonna set this to saute right here. And then I'm gonna throw in my veggies uh, to kind of get them uh, sweated and softened. Uh, first, I've got uh, a whole uh, yellow onion, so I'm popping that in here right here. Then I've got uh, about, it's supposed to be a half a cup of celery. I have a whole like thing of celery. I only needed, I have a cup of maybe three pieces, but what do I do with the rest of the celery? And it's already starting to, you know, get limpy, so I'm just throwing the whole thing in there. Hopefully it's not too celery. And then I've got a half a cup of red bell pepper uh, and a half a cup of orange bell pepper. I just cut up orange, that's all we had. We actually had it frozen because we bought it at a, one of those markets where you have to buy stuff that's about to go bad and you pay 10 bucks and grab all you can. So we have a lot of uh, orange peppers. So I'm just gonna throw those in here. I, we freeze them and I just thawed those out last night and uh, cut them up to put them in here. And then I've got a poblano chili, same thing. Uh, just a half a chili, it's the whole thing. What am I gonna do with half a chili? And then two cloves of, two cloves of garlic diced up. So I'm just gonna throw that in there. And I'm just gonna kind of mix that up a little bit. And all I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna saute these. So I need about five minutes for these, you know, for the celery and the onions to get soft. And after that, it'll be ready to go. And you can see here, I'm just kind of moving this around uh, to make sure it's not gonna stick or burn. And you can tell we're getting there. I mean, look at those colors. Look how great that combination of the oranges and the greens and the whites, like, it's absolutely beautiful. I know I say this all the time, but that's the colors of health right there. All right, so put it about three or four minutes. I'm gonna put in the uh, spices. All right, first in a half a tablespoon of cumin. Next after that, one half a tablespoon of paprika. After that, we've got one half a tablespoon of rosemary. We're gonna pop that right in here. And we've also got one half a tape. Oh, still got that little shaker thing on it. I hate those things. So we got, we got well, one half a tablespoon of uh, basil right here. Is that what it is? Yeah. All right, after that, we're using a teaspoon of salt. We're just using the Himalayan pink salt. A teaspoon of white pepper. I love these little square spoons. They fit in the jars, which is amazing. A half a teaspoon of onion powder. Who well, we uses half a teaspoon of anything? Okay, go big or go home. All right, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I want to do this while it's sauteing because I want to activate the spices. All right, perfect. Now I just want to get in here and mix this all up and let the spices get heated up and they'll start activating and, and really becoming aromatic. Woo! Oh yeah. I just want to do that for like 30 seconds. Otherwise they will start burning. So next I want to add one tablespoon of tomato paste while this is going on. Make sure I get all of that out of there. And the tomato paste will help form like a fond. It'll get all combined with the spices and kind of hold it all together, but still create a little flavor. Well, I can kind of see that happening down here. I'm just gonna let the tomato paste here cook for about three to four minutes. I'm gonna keep watching it, but it looks like it's burning. Then it's time to add a little bit of uh, broth. We want to use the broth to deglaze the pan, and we don't want to do that until, you know, the, the tomato sauce has had a little time to cook. So I want it to cook, I don't want it to burn. All right, so it's been about three minutes. I'm gonna add a little bit of broth here. And this will help me get the pan deglazed to get all that, that cooked tomato paste off the bottom of the pan. Yeah, I can kind of see it here, so. Again, check out my full video with the overhead camera that shows you all of this. All right, at this point, you can shut off the heat. And we're gonna wind up adding the rest of our ingredients now. All of the kind of the flavor is in there now. Now it's a matter of getting the rest of the vegetables in and making the soup out of this. 
All right, so now we're gonna add most of the rest of the ingredients. So at this point, we're gonna add uh, six cups of veggie stock. I started with six cups, so this is just, you know, the rest of it. All right. Next, we've got one tablespoon of rice vinegar. So just using whatever Sprouts had. Then I'm using one tablespoon of reduced sodium soy sauce. From Trader Joe's, I don't know. Now I'm gonna add back my uh, pearl barley. I keep wanting to say pearl barley, my pearl barley. So remember we cooked it earlier, so I'm gonna add that in now. And I'll kind of give this a stir to get the barley all mixed up. Oh man, it already looks good with the barley in there. Woo. Next, I've got a teaspoon of chia seeds. Um, I just keep my chia seeds like in a glass jar. And that's it. After that, I've got a 15 ounce can of uh, chickpeas or garbanzo beads, rinsed and drained, of course. And then I have a one pound bag of fire roasted corn frozen. Uh, a little bit's been used, so I've got about 14 ounces left of it. So I'm just gonna toss that in there. The frozen corn is really good in this soup. Next, I'm adding one 15 ounce can of uh, fire roasted diced tomatoes. This thing is getting full. And then, uh, <laughs> The recipe says a quarter of a cup of frozen green peas. There's never enough. I'm just adding two cups. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I love frozen green peas. And then I'm going to mix that up a little bit here just to kind of get it all combined so it cooks evenly. Right now, all the, the peas and the corn are floating on the top. So I want to mix all that up. Get it all going good. Oh, yeah, that's looking really good. Holy smoke. I mean, look at that. You know that's going to be good right there. Woo, baby. Okay. And then I'm also going to add a bay leaf. Now's the time to do that. So I'm just going to grab one out of here. I was afraid like I'm going to break these when I pull them out of here. All right. One bay leaf inserted. All right, so at this point, we're ready to cook it. So I'm going to put the lid in place, set it to ceiling position, and we're going to cook this for three minutes. Remember, we already cooked the pearl barley. That's why we had to cook it first, because it takes 15 minutes for that to cook, and this stuff only takes three. So by cooking it first, we could just cook it with everything else since it's already cooked. All right, see you in three minutes. All right, so the three minute cooking time is over, and I also let it do a natural release, and that took like almost 30 minutes. So the whole process was a lot more than three minutes, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to, the little pin in the back went down, so I'm gonna take off the cover. Oh, man, it's still really hot. All right, so take a look in here, and you can see here, there's certainly a lot in here, right? There's the bay leaf right there. I gotta grab that out, and uh, it's looking good. Probably next time I'll put the peas in at the end after I take it off, but otherwise, I think it looks really good. All right, so the next step to this is we need to get our greens in. Uh, it's supposed to be three cups of uh, chopped spinach. I just put in whatever was in the um, the the plastic container that I need to use is probably more than three cups. So I'm just gonna kind of get it in here and stir it in. And, uh, and just kind of get it to wilt and I'll just keep adding it until it's all wilted in. I just wanna get as much greens in here as possible. It's all gonna get really small, so it'll be even hard to see even with this much. And I'm just gonna slowly work the spinach in here because I don't want it to go flying out here. So I'm just gonna lay the cover on here for a minute or two and uh, while I clean up here, and uh, I'll give the spinach a few minutes to wilt, and then I'll have one more thing to put in. I just gave that a few minutes and it should be fine. Put this over here. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Uh, you can see the spinach in there, it's nice and wilted. It's, I love the color green in there, it's beautiful. So this is looking perfect. I think this is ready to go. All right, the last step is I've got a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lime juice. A tablespoon of freshly squeezed lime juice. I just squeezed a lime and I'm gonna put a tablespoon in here and pop that in and that's it. So at this point, I'm just gonna taste it and make sure it's okay. It's really hot, so I'm just gonna put it in a bowl here and give it a little minute to cool. And I think we're gonna be good. If I had needed to add like more spices, I could or whatever. I don't think we're gonna need to at this point. I think I just want to get it out of here. Ugh. Pop it right here. Well, that's ready to go for my next meal. Well, let me just make sure this tastes all right for in case I need to put in some uh, spices. 
All right, this right here is one of my favorite things to eat. It's absolutely delicious, so I can't wait to try this. Mmm. Oh, wow. It's delicious. Wow. This soup just has everything. Like, it's so good. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. I can't wait to have this for lunches. All right, soup complete. All right, so the next thing I'm making is my Spanish rice. Rice only takes a few minutes to cook in the Instant Pot, so this will be a quick recipe. I don't want to do the beans yet because beans take 35 minutes, so let's do this one first. All right, so we're going to start with a little food processor here. And we need to make, like, the Spanish sauce to go in the rice because it's basically Instant Pot right, white rice, right, with, like, a Spanish, like, uh, sauce. So we're going to make that first. And we're going to start that with a tablespoon of tomato paste, which is perfect because I opened this can up for the other recipe, and now I can throw it right in here. After that, we're going to add about a half onion. Again, I like don't know what to do with the other half of the onion, so I'm just throwing the whole thing in. I'm not worried about it being too oniony. And then I've got uh, like one or two cloves of garlic. I mean, the recipe calls for one clove of garlic, but I'm Italian. I can't put one clove of garlic into anything, so. And then the last thing I need in here is a quarter of a cup of water, so I'm just going to pour that in. All right, let me see if I can get my stuff mixed around here. And we're just going to blend all this together until we get it into a puree. This is, again, this is our sauce for the rice, so it's got to be saucy. You can see it just like a, looks like a, uh, like a tomato puree, right? I mean, that's all it is. So we can just kind of get rid of this for now. It's going to come in handy later on, but right now we don't need it. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try browning the rice. So I'm just going to set this on saute and give it a minute to kick in. And I'm just going to throw the rice in here and kind of see if I can dry cook it a little bit. But I want to release uh, the fragrance of the rice. So I've got my rice right here, and it's uh, one cup of long grain rice. This is just extra long grain uh, white rice from uh, Costco. I'm going to put that in there. And I'm just trying to, I did rinse the rice, so, but it was a while ago, so it shouldn't be wet still. I'm just going to try and move it around and see if I can get it to, to dry, to dry heat up a little bit. I have a, a recipe for this video uh, right up here also. Um, again, I, the recipe video for this has an overhead camera, so you can see right into uh, the pot what I'm doing. Although, that one's not an Instapot recipe. Um, I'm just making it in the Instapot. Uh, you can see here that uh, I've got the rice kind of yellowish a little bit, like it's browning a little bit, and I can really smell it. So, I mean, I think it's doing its thing here. I think that's all I really need to do with it. Um, you can skip this step. I kind of feel like it gives it that little, like, I don't know, ricey kind of aroma. All right, you can shut this off here, and I'm going to put in the rest of the ingredients here. First, it's a cup of rice, and in the Instant Pot, it's equal parts rice and uh, a water, so I'm gonna add in uh, a cup of water here. So here's my cup of water going in right there, and it is hot because it was, uh, it was doing the saute, all right? After that, I'm gonna put in the sauce that we made, so we just made this in the uh, food processor here. So I'm going to dump that in all together. And after that, we need a half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just going to throw that in here. And then about a tablespoon of bouillon. I'm just going to throw in an old bouillon cube I have laying around because um, I hate to throw these things out. I haven't used anything but uh, better than bouillon in a long time. But I want to use this up. And then I'm just going to mix this up over here and get it ready to, uh, to cook in the Instapot. All right, I'm just going to take the uh, Instapot here, cover, pop it on, set it to three minutes for manual pressure, and that's it. Three minutes, it'll be ready to go. Uh, see you then. All right, so I let it cook for three minutes, then I let it come to a natural uh, release which only took 10 minutes. The Instapot, the higher the amount of uh, food in there, the more pressure it is, the longer it takes uh, to get rid of that pressure naturally. Since there was only a cup of rice, it was maybe up to here, it was done in 10 minutes. All right, let's open this up. Let's make sure I don't have any more uh, air, and I don't, any more pressure. I'm gonna open this up. Let's see what we got in here. Oh yeah. I'm just going to grab a fork over here and kind of fork it up and make sure it's ready to go. And notice that 
all of the water is gone, so the rice absorbed it naturally. So I'm just gonna mix this up here. All right, I'm gonna give this a taste here. I've got some rice on the fork. It's steaming hot, so I wanna make sure I don't scorch my tongue, because I hate that. Let's see what, uh, what it tastes like. Oh yeah, mm. This is absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna get this out of here and I get this into a bowl. And I've still got the other insert being used back there for the soup because the soup is just steaming hot. So it's gotta cool down before I can put a cover on it. And what's really cool is when you buy these extra inserts, they come with these lids, these silicone covers, and you just pop it on and it'll snap it in and throw it in the fridge. That's what I'm gonna do with the soup back there. When I can't do it now because it's too hot, but once it cools down a little bit, I'm gonna put this silicone lid on it and stick the whole thing right in the fridge, right? And it's there when I need it this week. All right, I need to get a bowl for this and put this in. All right, so I've just put the rice in this container. I'll throw this in the fridge. This rice will be perfect on burritos during the week, bean and uh, cheese burritos, like the cashew cheese. For Lex, he's gonna love this. All right, that leaves me with my last Instant Pot meal that I'm gonna make today, and that is my refried beans, my Instant Pot refried beans. Um, this is an amazing recipe. Many of you have made it and told me how amazing it is. In the end, I used to uh, stick blend the beans to make them refried, but anymore, we just don't do that. We just eat them the way they are because they just taste so amazing. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a little water in here and then I'm just gonna set this to saute and give it a moment to get hot and then I'm gonna start throwing in my onions, my garlic, my poblano peppers. It's really a simple recipe. There's like, I don't know, there's a few uh, aromatics, two spices or three spices and the beans and that's it. All right, so I've got some steam coming out. I'm gonna get my onions in. I've just got one onion uh, diced up and four garlic cloves, that's all. And then I've also got a poblano pepper, so I'm gonna throw that in. And uh, again, I don't have an overhead camera, but if you wanna see how this is made, you can check out the full video I have right here. I'm just gonna kind of move this around, and I'm gonna let this saute for about five minutes until the onions have softened. And you can see here, I'm just kind of moving this stuff around, just waiting for it to get soft. And that's it. All right, so it's been about five minutes. I'm just gonna shut that off here. I'm gonna add in my spices. All right, for the spices, it's really simple. It's a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of chili powder, and two teaspoons of salt, and that's it. Oops. I'm gonna get those mixed up. And I'm gonna dump in my beans. I have a pound of beans measured on a scale. Uh, I did rinse them, but they're dry pinot beans. I bought them in the, the 25 pound bag, uh, Costco bags. Uh, dry pinot beans and one pound. When you're cooking beans in the Instant Pot, the ratio for water to beans is one pound of uh, beans to six cups of water. So I'm gonna put that in there. And give this a little mixy mixy. And that's it, I'm just gonna put the cover on here. Lock and load, set it to ceiling position, and this has to cook for manual pressure, 35 minutes, it's a long time. 35 minutes, then I'm gonna do a natural release and we'll be done with this. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so the beans are done. I let the uh, pressure release naturally, so there's nothing left. So let's open it up and see what we have here. Oh man, it smells really good. They always do. This is such an amazing recipe. You can see here the beans are nicely cooked. Man, ooh, look at that. That's gonna be delicious. So there is a lot of extra water in here. And that's normal because it takes uh, six uh, cups of water to cook one pound of beans. So in the video that I have on this, uh, I take out some of that water, about a half a cup and I toss it. And then I use my stick blender and I just uh, blend it up into refried beans. So in the fridge, it thickens up overnight and it's an amazing refried beans recipe. So what I'm gonna do with this is what I've been doing with it lately is just leaving it like this uh, and putting it in a glass container with the water just to keep it, you know, the cooking liquid, just to keep it, uh, you know, hydrated and all that. And then I just spoon it out with a slot of spoon as I'm ready to eat it. I think I'm gonna try these, to make sure the spices are right on tap there. And, uh, but this is, I make this recipe literally every week and it's always delicious, so. Mm. oh yeah. 
These are really good. Oh. All right, so I just need to get these in a container. I'll show you what I do with them. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this without burning myself. So uh, I'm just going to take out the beans with this spider thingy. Even though I'm gonna use the water anyway, I don't wanna, if I just pour it into this thing, it's gonna splash everywhere and burn me. So I try and get out all the beans and then I put enough water in here just to keep the beans kind of submerged. Um, this makes just a little more than, that, than this container will hold because I put it in the same container every week. So I know I can't just pour it in there. All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna pour some liquid in here. This is the aquafaba, the cooking liquid. And I'll just kind of pour enough in there till I submerge the beans right about there. And that's it. And then we're done with the rest of it. Let's see here. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, so you can see here, I've got all three items, all Instapot. Uh, this one's still in the Instapot. I've got my uh, 10 vegetable soup, the Instapot versions, looking good. I've got my uh, pinto beans. I'm ready to make some uh, burritos out of that. And I've got my uh, Spanish rice, which will, which will go great with burritos or by itself. So here's what I do with this stuff, right? Um, it's really easy for me to make non-saucy vegetables throughout the week. I can heat up some uh, uh, frozen vegetables really quick, and I've got plenty of those. So this rice, I have rice on one side of the plate and, you know, some uh, broccoli or something else on the other side of the plate, plate that just takes minutes in the microwave to heat up, and I'm ready to go. The beans, that's really flex every week, but I eat them too. That's a whole food plant-based version of a burrito, right? Like, I give him his burrito shells. He's not worried about the fat, so he gets flour burrito shells, but I can grab some corn taco shells if I want. We can throw that on there. I can throw the rice in there. Um, I could throw on uh, some cashew cheese sauce if he wants it, just drizzle that on. And then he's got burritos, I've got burritos, and I can serve that with a salad if I want. And there's my starch and non-starchy meals right there. The soup, there's a 50-50 plate just the way it is. So I can start ladling this out, and there's my meal. Um, you don't necessarily have to uh, make your meals in containers ready to eat when you're meal prepping for the week. I like to just make the ingredients and then you know, during the week, I'll decide what I'm having today. Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? And I'll throw it together. It's just simpler for me that way. Um, and it gives me more of an opportunity to have different things rather than, you know, a potato and some broccoli packed five times for, you know, for lunch all week. So that's what we're doing today because it's like 1030 at night and I'm exhausted. And I got work tomorrow. Uh, that's our video. Uh, another meal prep, uh, weekend meal prep video. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, just to give you some ideas, all Instapot. Uh, hit the like button, uh, show us some love. Think about subscribing and becoming part of that plant-based ads family. If you click on that bell, you get notified every time we have a new video, usually every Tuesday. Leave a comment below. Are you meal prepping? Uh, do you just wing it? I, that doesn't work for me, so uh, let me know how you do it. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. No. All right, tell them your joke that you just told me. <laughs> oh, I was telling them that... Um... <laughs> Tim said that when I said bye-bye, uh, Tim's like, they're going to say they've been missing Tim. <laughs> okay. <laughs>